It's my 10th birthday. And I can't believe I have to put up with this crap. I hate my dad. Why would he make such a stupid decision? Why did he move into this stupid Vibros bunker when I was a baby? It's my birthday today and instead of having fun and playing outside like a regular kid, I get to eat some crappy tasting cake in a cramped cafeteria. Almost everyone here is either a complete whack job or a jerk. The only real friend I have is Amata. I can always count on her. It's, it's times like this that I, I think that I wouldn't have been in this situation if it weren't for mom dying. I think it was her death that drove dad to make us move down here. My party's gonna start in about an hour and hopefully dad at least managed to find me something decent. June 25th, 2012. I think dad's gone crazy. He gave me a fucking gun. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it down in this vault, but he doesn't seem to care. Mr. Amadover or the Overseer, as he likes to call himself, gave me a pretty cool digital watch. I wear it so much it's like it's welded to my wrist. I got nothing of value from anyone else. December 28th, 2012. It's past the day of the apocalypse and nothing has happened. Big surprise. My dad keeps insisting that the end will soon be upon us and that I should be thankful I'm in such a protected place. I try to convince him that he's gone mad, but he won't pay me any mind. February 13th, 2014. I snuck into my dad's office today. Him being the vault's only dentist, he has information on all the residents. I figured I might be able to get some inside information on Christine by accessing his computer. I found nothing and I was about to leave before I noticed his personal journals were left open. I read the most recent entry. The Novocaine transport pipe has a leak at point three two three xy 3 a constant supply of Novocaine is being added to the air supply. Due to the security and health implications of repairing it, we have decided to leave it be. The dosh is just said to be small enough to have no effect on residents. I couldn't understand most of what he was talking about. I heard his footsteps approaching, so I quickly ran back to my room. January 16th, 2015. I was incredibly bored one day, as I was most days, so I decided to snoop around Dad's office. He has a bobblehead with a huge medical syringe on the desk for some reason. I found his journals again and decided to read. The gap has slowly widened over the last year. The Novocaine doses are increasing. At this level, we expect minor brain damage as a side effect. I warned Alphonse of the implications, but he's gone mad with power. At this rate, the leak is doomed to increase in size. Permanent brain damage will be the result. I wouldn't be surprised if hallucinations start to set in after enough time has passed. I hope to God things resolve themselves. I didn't know what Novocaine was, but I sure knew what brain damage was. I immediately confronted my dad about what he wrote. He passed it off as a novel he was writing. It explains things better than it being true, I guess. I'll choose to believe it. For now. August 4th, 2017. 
I'm suffering from what I believe to be our terrible hallucinations. I keep seeing giant cockroaches, and my watch has become oddly high-tech. I vaguely remembered my dad's journal talking about this, so I ran into his office and started reading. I'm sure of it. Everyone is going mad from the Novocaine. They're starting to fabricate things in their senses. The terrifying thing is that these hallucinations even penetrate one's memories. It's as if it completely alters your perception. Everything is livable. No one is crazy beyond reason. But if things persist to an unbearable point, I'll be forced to try and repair the pipe myself. This was ridiculous. Why would Dad say such things? The giant roaches have, have always been there. Ever since I was born. I even shot one on my birthday. Andy the robot has worked at Dad's office for years. He was even at my party. The sheer implication he was making that, that people were starting to go crazy? It's just preposterous. I'm sure this is just an inventive story of him. I'm, I'm sure everything's fine. September 24th, 2018. Today is the day of the big test. I'm really excited. I hope I'll become a laundry cannon operator. Ooh, or, or maybe a, a pit boy programmer. That would be so cool. Well, I better get going. I don't want to be late. Hopefully I won't run into Butch and the tunnel snakes on my way there. March 11th, 2021. I found a note from my father. Son, the vault is falling into ruin. I, I need to try my best to repair the Novocaine pipe. For some reason, I'm the only one not affected by the gas. If I don't succeed or something goes wrong, I'm leaving the vault. Son, you mustn't leave. Everyone in the vault has gone homicidal, and I don't know what they'll do to you. I'm not even sure if you can understand this letter, but just know that I love you. <laughs> Dad is so silly. March 12th, 2021. Amada woke me up. She said there was a lockdown. Officers were patrolling the halls and my father had escaped. She gave me a pistol and ran off. My God, I see what's happened. My father wasn't crazy. He, he, he was telling the truth. He was trying to save us all. Everything I knew was a, a figment of my own creation. The ridiculous uniforms everyone wore. The giant cockroaches. The robot doctor. It was all so ridiculous. How could I have been so stupid? I ran out of my room, determined to escape with my father. I cut a path of blood along my way, shooting what I thought were giant cockroaches and officers. Who knew if they were real or not? I shot the overseer in cold blood and walked away from the sobbing form that was Amada. The exit to the vault was just within reach. I could feel my mind on fire. Everything warped before my eyes. I collapsed to the ground. Date unknown. I, I woke up at the entrance to the vault 
On the outside, I still had my uniform. I still had my pit boy. It was all the same. I looked around. A barren landscape extended for miles. I was free of the vault, yet everything remained the same. How could this be? It hit me. It's all real. I was sane. My father had been the crazy one. I had entered into a new post-apocalyptic world, and it was mine for the taking. I felt unstoppable. I picked up a radio signal on my watch and started running through the scorched field. On the horizon was what appeared to be a shanty town of some sort. I had a good feeling about this. I was on top of the world. I was unstoppable. I was the lone wanderer. Subject 134 is one of our most interesting cases. We have no name for him, but he calls himself the Lone Wanderer. He was found running around the DC area screaming, shouting, and talking to random foliage. He was also reported to be seen shooting at wildlife with a BB gun. Upon closer interrogation, he insists upon thinking that he's in a post-apocalyptic landscape. He insists upon calling me Lucas Sims, the sheriff of some place he calls Megaton. He keeps telling us that his cell is a house I provided him with upon defusing the bomb in the center of town. The bomb he is referring to is what I believe to be the sculpture in the courtyard. We let him out occasionally. He always has the same reaction. He insists upon being in an apocalyptic world. We have no idea where he came from. He appeared to pop up out of nowhere. All we know for sure is that he shows little hope for improvements.